Sometimes it's necessary for Svelte to interact with DOM elements directly. Uh, of course, you could uh, extract DOM elements using uh, document.query selector or some such methods, but then you have to specify you know, some IDs and classes and some way of selecting those elements. That's very clunky. It would be much better if Svelte had a direct way of attaching JavaScript code to DOM elements that it creates. And there is a way. There are two directives to do this. One is bind colon this, uh, which basically allows you to attach a JavaScript variable to a DOM element. And the second is use directive, which is slightly more advanced and more versatile. Uh, that one allows you to attach a function uh, to be invoked uh, on a DOM element, as well as uh, a few other more advanced features. So let's take a look at this. So first thing we will do is we will, uh, this is our swell REPL with the quintessential hello world in there. So let's see if we wanted to do something with this h1 tag uh, in Svelte code. So, so what we could do is we could just, uh, if we wanted to get the DOM element that represents the h1, all you have to do is create a variable. Let's call it a DOM element and then attach um, here the the way you do that is you say bind colon this, right? And equal to, and then the expression that evaluates to the element. So now keep in mind that this is, we are not assigning DOM element to this. We are doing the other way, the, 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 the DOM element that is H, H1 gets assigned to this variable called DOM element. Uh, but since this is bind colon prefix, that's why it is a two-way binding, right? So uh, let's, uh, first thing we will do is console.log DOM element. And you will notice that it doesn't quite work in a second. Let's go to inspect element. Uh, let me increase the font size a little. That's a bigger font. And we will also increase the font in the uh, console. Okay. So now, when you do this, let's uh, let's make some some. Uh, we are doing console.log, so let's make some uh, trivial change so that it triggers again. So here, did you see how it printed undefined? That's because console.log was was triggered as soon as this variable was declared, and it never got a chance to do the binding itself. So one way to do that is uh, to see that uh, this is somewhat primitive way is to make this a reactive statement. So now, when we make it a reactive statement, it printed two things. First, it printed undefined. And then, when this h1 was actually created, uh, the DOM element was uh, updated with this h1 DOM element. And that's why it printed hello world. So now if we make any changes, uh, well, we cannot May, I mean, I can change this and it will keep doing this. So the right way to do this would be to wrap this inside on mount. Let's do that. So we import on mount first. So import on mount from swell. And then we will call on mount on mount. Here's the callback for our mount, and we will put the console log inside that. So with this, hopefully, let's uh, change something. And okay, see it says here message could not be cloned. Open Dev Tools to see it. So yeah, let's go to Dev Tools, inspect, and look at console. So here. I'll just make some change here just to re-trigger it. There you go. There is no print of undefined anymore uh, because uh, on mount only triggers after this h1 has been created. And this is how DOM element is available to you in JavaScript. Now you can do other things. You could say, hey, uh, DOM 
underscore element create event listener and then you can say okay well let's uh, attach some code and this could be console dot log oh sorry create event listener I would specify the event which is let's say click on click event uh, do this oh I think it's create or add we'll see um, and then console dot log you click and then we can print the down element okay let's see let's see if uh, this works create event listener is not a function so let's say is it add event listener I think it is all right let's see if this works if I now click on it I see you click hello world h1 so it's printing the if I, I can keep clicking it and it keeps doing that so the point I'm making is that you now have access to the to the DOM elements that Svelte has created and you can now do regular DOM related HTML JavaScript uh, activities to this so this is the simple version of it let's look at the uh, a little more advanced version this is this becomes a little clunky as you will see um, you cannot attach extra information and uh, you cannot also you if you wanted a detachment callback so you all you have is a, you know an attachment callback you don't have detachment and what if what if things change what if you want to print the name uh, as it changes and this code was coming from somewhere else it was not here so let's move this into its own uh, so we'll create a new uh, this time we will use the use attribute okay so let's remove all this okay we don't need on mount also what we will do is we will create something called uh, clickable.js let's say clickable.js okay and in there we will add a function uh, we will say export default function because this the whole purpose of this module is to uh, house this function so export default function which takes some parameters p and it takes a node so this node is a dom node and parameters p you will see in a second uh, are is, is a, an object that you pass in i'll show you in a second so let's say a console dot log attaching to and then we say attaching clickable to let's say here's our node and here here are the parameters let's say uh, parameters are p and i'll say params okay. let's print that and to use it all you have to do is import this you don't need dom element anymore you say import um, clickable from dot slash clickable dot js um, and now instead of bind this to DOM element you simply say use mm, clickable so oh, sorry no 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 not like this use colon clickable my bad use colon clickable all right so now let's go to inspect and you will Go to console and let's uh, cause some some change uh, all right so i just made a deleted empty line and i have attaching clickable to this node and the parameters are undefined you see how params are undefined and we we can assign some parameters you can just say empty params parameters now this is an expression keep in mind the the curly braces means um you know a JavaScript expression so the inside that we give an empty object as expression so now once we did that attaching clickable to here's the DOM element the node the, the DOM node 
and here are the parameters which are of course the empty object that we gave sorry empty object from here to here so now why is this better uh, of course first of all let's make it clickable actually so we just say node dot add event listener and here's the click event and then we will attach some kind of code to it so we can say console.log you clicked and then we know what they clicked they, uh, we can print the node uh, we can print the parameters we can print the node we can print even the event which you get from the event handle callback so let's see if this works so here uh, we have attaching clickable to hello world no parameters i click on it and there it says you clicked here are the parameters here's the node and here's the full event so you can you can do whatever you want with this event so this is slightly better i mean this is infinitely better than having to attach an id to this and then uh, from that id uh, you know you can say query sel selector and then add event listener that way that would be that would be much more complicated and not very reusable much clunkier so now let's uh, it, what else can we do but at this point uh, bind this approach as well as use approach they they seem very similar um, i don't see much benefit but there are benefits benefit is that you can from this uh, um, action function you can return an object that object can have multiple uh, methods at least one so here let's return well, let me close this yeah, let's return an object this object will have a method called destroy and this destroy method can do whatever i mean it can actually and detach the handlers of course uh, at a minimum but but it can do a whole bunch of things right so we could just say um, console.log so this is the time when you might might detach uh, jquery plugins or or some so many other things that you you could unload certain libraries if you wanted so here let's just for now we'll just say uh, uh, detaching click handler or and you can say detaching or destroying right so now when you do this and if you go to inspect element and uh, let's just make some small change so that it reloads uh, so there it is go to console it says and it's uh, uh, well right now of course toggle is, is off if i click on toggle it says attaching clickable to hello world and then when i click it of course shows when i click toggle again it says detaching or destroying the click handler see so this is one benefit this you could not get with just bind this there is one more benefit and that is you can have another uh, method update method an update method can receive new parameters new values of the parameters so let me before i do that uh, let me just show you what if you wanted to add name this uh, this name as a parameter so if you say name equal to name this is one way or you can just say since the property and the value are same so we just say name like this so now when we do this we will see parameters so if i click toggle it says attaching clickable to this h1 and now name is equal to word right but what what if you updated the value of name so let's say you had a an input box input bind colon value is name right so you have an input a two way bound input so now if I go into into this console log and I say okay toggle it so you are seeing world but now if you change world to whatever you're adding this but you are not see you're, you're, you still says you clicked name world but name uh, the value of name is not no longer world it has changed so that's the issue and uh, we can fix that by simply adding an update method that takes new parameters let's call them p and then 
all we do is uh, params equal to the new value of p and uh, so here there's an unexpected token error oh yeah there, we need a comma here and then we just say console.log updated action and then we can give you the new value of params let's see what happens so now when we come back here and we toggle it says name equal to word right and if you can and when you click on it it shows you click name equal to word but when you update it let's say word with um, let's say new word so we said new word and look it updated on every keystroke it says new word so now update action says uh, but the parameter is new name equal to new word when you click it no longer says name equal to world, it says name equal to new world. So this is the benefit of use directive. So that I think uh, should conclude our video for today. Um, hopefully you now understand both the value of bind colon this, uh, the way we do sometimes uh, versus use with a function approach. Uh, you can say bind this to some DOM element like that and you can use the DOM, DOM element directly or you can I think this one is more advanced this is appropriate when you need to uh, update the behavior or even detach the behavior as necessary and not just attach an add event lesson so uh, those are the two very useful directives use directive and bind this directive Hopefully you learned something and uh, see you in the next video.